Welcome to Conversations That Matter. I'm Lydia Madrigal. Today's conversations are about people's concern on one of the most pressing issues of the 2012 presidential election. Our conversations are with a pastor, a United States congressman, and a Hollywood director. You might be asking, what do they have in common? Well, evidently, immigration reform. Our first interview is with Congressman Raul Rijalva. Rijalva is in his fifth term as a member of Congress. He is the son of a migrant worker who came from Mexico in 1945 with the Bracero program. Grijalva was the first Latino elected to the Tucson Unified School District Board. Grijalva is considered one of the most outspoken leaders on the issue of immigration reform. I met with him in Washington, D.C. to discuss immigration. This is what he had to say. SB 1070 have been introduced in other states, such as Michigan and Minnesota. How does this reflect on and how will it impact the general tone of immigration reform in the United States? Let's just go by what it did in Arizona. Okay. Um, it's been uh, and continues to be very divisive. It has generated uh, some real splits along a variety of communities. It has racially charged the debate more than it should be. It's always been an underlining issue to the question of immigration, but now this makes it front center. The profiling aspect primarily, and because of the empowerment of police to be able to stop on reasonable suspicion. If you replicate these in other places, I, I, I just see the same experience that we're having in Arizona, which is not healthy. It's not healthy for the economy and it's not healthy for the social well-being of our communities. Instead of pushing members of Congress, both senators and members and Congress people, uh, to really tackle this federal obligation of immigration reform, uh, as I've seen the impact in Arizona, it kind of uh, makes them even more cautious and timid to take the issue up. In a time where we have grown as a nation, there's an expectation that we would want to fix it at a national level because it's a national responsibility. But then there's also the political reaction where some of my colleagues, and I'm talking about Democrats because I'm a Democrat, have backed off the issue tremendously because of 1070 and the popular support that it has. So it's become another reason not to move forward. We who are really Christians need to rise up. I think it's just a political we're afraid to lose, we're afraid to look somebody I, the wrong way. I think it's caution. They do all of this talking, spewing out all of this hatred in the name of Christianity. It's been used very effectively as a wedge issue, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, amnesty, secure the border first, an invasion. Uh, and so these things keep getting beat up via the media and, and political leaders. And, in our state and across the country. And so what it does to people is it either sends them to try to mimic that rhetoric mm -hmm. or it silences them. But if we don't speak up, they will continue to have free reign with their propaganda. And we cannot afford that anymore. Those that do stand up to that rhetoric then become the focal point of a lot of attention. Right. And I can speak for myself. <laughs> <laughs> It is a difficult issue. Uh, yeah, the smart thing I, uh, I've been told is to keep quiet. Uh, the smart thing is to hide in the tall grass mm -hmm. and let the issue kind of go away and just worry about getting yourself elected. Uh, and, and, I, and unfortunately, many of my colleagues are taking that advice mm -hmm. uh, on this issue. I hope it's momentary. I hope they realize that we have a huge problem that's getting worse in this country mm -hmm. and that uh, they'll come back with a, a little more gumption a little more spine to tackle this very difficult problem. Oh, that's the Texas can't you see? Texas can't you see? What the state is doing to me? What do you think is the biggest myth or misconception about illegal immigrants in the United States? God, that's a great question. One, that it is uh, an economic drain, that it is sucking the lifeblood of, the economic lifeblood of this country, particularly in these tough recession that we're in right now, this deep recession that we're in, it becomes even more prevalent myth, and it is a myth more goes in that comes out. Much, much more goes in. And I think the other myth is that this is a threat to the culture of America. This diversity, this language, this culture is somehow under taking away the, the, the American culture. We 
which no one has ever been able to describe in the history of this nation. Because we're a nation of immigrants. Uh, we're a great experiment in diversity, the greatest experiment on the, on the face of the earth in diversity. That's the social myth that's out there, that the, these people are not American enough. Which is a total myth because like any other immigrant by second generation, by first generation, the integration process and the assimilation process into America is already well on its way if not completed. And the economic one, like I said, there's more that goes in in terms of out economic output by immigrants and undocumented people than it take ever, ever will be taken up. Every day, there's a great excuse to eat Coast 101 Cafe with the wholesome breakfast or one of Coast 101's famous carne con chile verde or delicious fajitas to Ensenada fish taco. So coast into the weekend at Coast 101 Cafe, downtown Odessa. Coast 101 Cafe is perfect for an evening out with friends. From half-off wine and appetizers every Thursday or for a special evening out, enjoy Coast 101 Friday night wine and dinner series featuring live jazz music. How many excuses do you need to eat great home-cooked food? Coast 101 Cafe. What do I like about Super Burrito? Hmm. I like the chili verde the best. Hmm. What do I like about Super Burrito? Chicken fajita nacho. Mmm, burritos. What I like about Super Burrito is their ice cream. Breakfast burritos are the best. Homemade tortillas. It is so good. What do I like about Super Burrito? Service with a smile. It's my Super Burrito. Every day, there's a great excuse to eat Coast 101 Cafe with the wholesome breakfast or one of Coast 101's famous carne con chile verde from delicious fajita to Ensenada fish tacos. So coast into the weekend at Coast 101 Cafe, downtown Odessa. We met up with our Hollywood director in Washington, D.C., where he was receiving an award from the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. Director Chris Weitz is an American producer, writer, director, and actor. He is known for his work with his brother Paul Weitz on the comedy films American Pie and About a Boy. He also directed the film adaptation of the novel The Golden Compass and the film adaptation of the new movie. You're the enemy now. The tribe won't hesitate. You will be slaughtered from the series of Twilight books. Weitz was born in New York City and is the grandson of Mexican actress Lupita Tovar, who starred in Santas, Mexico's first talkie in 1932. I spoke with the director about his most recent film, A Better Life. A story about an undocumented immigrant who has come to the United States with his son. We discussed his views on immigration and his motivation for producing the film. Here is what he had to say. Papa. Why did you have me? To be able to take care of you and watch you grow. What do you think were the, the greatest challenge of making the movie? 
I think the greatest challenge was realizing how much I had to learn because uh, as a kind of an average American, I didn't know very much about the Hispanic community, about the different facets of the Hispanic community, about the immigration issue. And it's really a wall that people have to break through if anything's going to get done in this country. And if the 10.8 million people who are living in the shadows are going to be brought into the light and given a better life. So, what do you think? Blasco's truck? Yeah, it's all right. I've seen it before. It's not Blasco's truck anymore. It's ours. People say the American dream is dead. They're wrong. It's being lived out today by immigrants um, from Latin American countries and from other countries. This truck's my only chance to make this grow into something big, so we can move out of here and get you in a better school. It was really kind of coming down from my high horse as a director and asking people like Father Gregory Boyle of Homeboy Industries. I don't know what's going to happen to us. You ain't got to worry about me. But I do worry. I worry about you all the time and asking uh, detainees, asking former gang members what their lives were like, asking uh, young people in East Los Angeles what their lives were like. Well, son, yeah, I gotta bounce. All right, Louis, be easy. Gotta talk about your future. Have you received any kind of negative comments about the movie? Yes, we've received negative comments on, you know, comment lists after the trailer by people who, um, are very clearly anti-immigration. One thing I notice about those kinds of comments is they're usually anonymous and so I don't pay much attention to them because it's easy for a coward to say what he has to say under an assumed name. Some people you'll never uh, change their minds. I think the key is to, is to appeal to the reasonable people uh, amongst the electorate who know that the system is broken, but don't know the path to fixing it. What do you feel is the most important issue facing our country today? It can be a hard place. It's immigration reform, uh, because 5% of our uh, population is, is here without papers. It actually hurts the economy for these people to not be legalized. And it helps the economy if they have a path to legalization. All of my family speaks Spanish. My wife is uh, media cubana, media uh, mexicana, American. And um, when I looked at this, this wonderful script, uh, I decided, well, this is, amongst other things, a great opportunity for me to get back to my roots. But it's where I work. And I dream of a better life for my son. What I hope people take from watching the, uh, A Better Life is um, a greater sense of what it's like for the average uh, immigrant, the average undocumented immigrant. For a reason to live. Who uh, goes to work, works hard, is a religious person, cares about his family, to realize that these are people just like us. What do I like about Super Burrito? What do I like about Super Burrito? Hmm. I like the chili verde the best. Hmm. What do I like about Super Burrito? Chicken fajita nacho. Mmm, burritos. What I like about Super Burrito is their ice cream. Breakfast burritos are the best. Homemade tortillas. It is so good. What do I like about Super Burrito? Service with a smile. It's my Super Burrito. Every day, there's a great excuse to eat Coast 101 Cafe with the wholesome breakfast or one of Coast 101's famous carne con chile verde from delicious fajitas to Ensenada fish tacos. So coast into the weekend at Coast 101 Cafe, downtown Odessa.
every day, there's a great excuse to eat Coast 101 Cafe with the wholesome breakfast or one of Coast 101's famous carne con chile verde or delicious fajitas to Ensenada fish tacos. So coast into the week at Coast 101 Cafe, downtown Odessa. Coast 101 Cafe is perfect for an evening out with friends. From half off wine and appetizers every Thursday or for a special evening out, enjoy Coast 101 Friday night wine and dinner series featuring live jazz music. How many excuses do you need to eat great home cooked food? Coast 101 Cafe. Next, you will hear from a pastor with a great passion for immigration reform. Reverend Samuel Rodriguez was named the leader of the Hispanic Evangelical Movement by CNN. Reverend Rodriguez is regarded as one of the most prominent evangelical for the 16 million strong Hispanic American born again Christian community. He is an award winning writer contributing to the Washington Post and Newsweek. He is an Assemblies of God ordained minister since the age of 23. He resides in California with his wife of 20 years. He has led the National Hispanic Leadership Conference, America's largest Hispanic Christian organization with 25,434 member churches. I met with him in Washington, D.C. to discuss immigration reform, and this is what he had to say. How does the issue of illegal Im immigration intersect with the realm of spirituality and social justice? Oh, immigration, first and foremost, is a matter of a moral imperative. It's a spiritual issue above all things. It's not a political issue from the beginning. Uh, throughout different faith narratives, but particularly my narrative is Christian, from Genesis all the way down to Revelation, we talk about the sojourner and the stranger and the alien. Leviticus 19, Romans 13, Matthew, the Good Samaritan parable, the story of the other, the one who came into a land and was rejected. By coincidence, every, on every single occasion, the good Lord was on the side of mm, the immigrant. It's a matter of a moral imperative. Immigration reform needs to take on a very prophetic witness, social justice mantra or mantle. This to us is similar to what the African American community experienced as they fought against segregation and Jim Crow. This is our moment to push back against an injustice. It's not that Hispanics are committed to amnesty. We're not. We believe and respect the rule of law. There were egregious circumstances that prompted millions of individuals to cross over the river and to look for a better life. That circumstance had names. It was a little girl with brown eyes. It was a little boy with black eyes. It was a future, a better day for their family. And if you were five miles away from saving your family, and you had a choice of living in poverty for the rest of your life and being surrounded with narco traffickers and cartels and kidnappings and rapes, and you were five miles away from saving your children and your daughters and your sons, would you cross over? I would. It's a matter of saving your home and family. Is it the right thing to do? We want people to come in here legally. Our nation has the right to protect our borders. We're a sovereign nation. We have a right to protect our borders. If not, it would be chaos and anarchy. But I do believe it is a social justice issue at the end of the day. It is Matthew 25, it is Luke 4. And when we stand up as a community, and we do what the African Americans did, and we say this is, a, this is the time for righteousness and justice to rise up in our nation, we're gonna win. It, it is a discriminatory law, it is a phobic, it is nativist, it is, it is political expediency on steroids. It is Governor Brewer's attempt to galvanize her community for the sake of her re-election. That's all it was. At the same time, it is morally reprehensible for you to legalize be a de facto or de jour racial profiling and nativism in 21st century America. It shouldn't be tolerated. We have over 50 million Hispanics in this nation. If we model the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and if we mobilize our people across this country and have a Hispanic social and civil rights movement, we would push back against the xenophobia and against the nativism that right now permeates every sector of our society. I think that, of course, there, there have been things that you've said that I think people find controversial. And rather than going just down that path of, of that, I, I want to ask you about the, on a whole, how would you characterize non-Hispanic evangelical opinion regarding comprehensive immigration reform. Well, now, now we're privy to the fact that in light of the work of the past five years, relational work, door-to-door, uh, -door, Starbucks meeting, uh, it worked. Recent survey indicates that the majority of white evangelical leaders and now people in the pews support immigration reform. Five years ago, they were the number one group opposing the immigration reform. See, that's the secret. Five years ago, the number one, according to Pew Research, the number one group opposed to immigration reform were white evangelicals. Five years later, they're supporting uh, immigration reform. I wonder how that happened. 
Well, it happened through relationship building. It happened by the Hispanic community reaching out to these segments of our society and saying, let me share a story. Here's why, we, why we're here. These are our values. Our values are the values of our founding fathers. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, we're God-fearing, hard-working, and family-loving. These are the characteristics that made this nation great, from Plymouth Rock to Jamestown. So the moment that we converge around the core values that make our nation great, then the guard will come down, and we're going to be able to establish relationships. It's going to be hard for you to deport one of your friends or someone who you're in relationship with. So it works. So at the end of the day, the faith community, now white, brown, yellow, we're coming together and we're saying this is a matter of faith, it's a matter of biblical justice. As a pastor, as a reverend, have there, has there been any other issue that has taken you with, to, I guess, show or display such passion? There are other issues. There are other issues. I, I would be lying to you <laughs> if I would say that this is the only issue that drives me. There are other issues that drive me. Uh, I, I, I love to defend life. I'm, I love people. And I'm a, I'm a staunch life supporter uh, from the womb to the tomb. So I, I, I hate injustice anywhere, in the words of Dr. King, uh, anywhere. And, and, and we want to lift up a, a shield of righteousness against any sort of injustice. I am obviously, I am obviously of Hispanic, of Hispanic origin. origin. But nothing has driven me to the point of an epiphany. I never would have believed as a Generation Xer that in the 21st century that my kids would have to hear the rhetoric that they've heard about Latinos. Uh, one day, my children in California, right after a, a strong debate on television on one of the major networks about immigration, when this thing was at, was at its height, its pinnacle, we passed by a restaurant and uh, sprayed on a brand new car, it said, Mexicans go home. Uh, in California, I never thought my kids in 21st century America would have to read that. I thought they were going to read about it in history books, about the African American community in the 1960s and 50s and 40s and so forth, not about Latinos in 21st century America. So it's personal. It's definitely personal. We need to bring our country back together. And, and we do it with the canopy of faith. The only one that could bring this together is the spirit of God. It's the spirit of love and compassion and forgiveness and reconciliation. That's why I do what I do. Most people agree that immigration is not an easy fix, and it will be an issue in the upcoming elections. Until our next conversation, I'm Lydia Madrigal, and this is Conversations That Matter. <laughs>